Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to uh, scientific section S2 on water resources management. This morning we will have uh, uh, a number of presentations which are subdivided in, uh, in, uh, in different themes of the IHP uh, phase eight that we discussed yesterday. I would like to introduce now an, an, a new chair that uh, is part of the family since very, since not a long time and it's, it's from the University of Florence, and it's the UNESCO Chair on the Prevention and Sustainable Management of Geohydrological Hazards. The, the, the chair holder is Professor Paolo Canuti on my right, and the coordinator of the chair is Professor Nicola Casagli. So, Paolo, you have the floor. Thank you. A few words. Leaving to Professor Casagli the task to speak about the <coughs> mission of the UNESCO chair in Florence. A few words to express to Professor Rubertini the feeling of a personal friendship after 35 years of collaboration. But also the compliments <coughs> and all the best to his... Uh, huh? <laughs> yes, obviously. <laughs> and all the best to his activity for the UNESCO chair on the water culture that uh, I appreciate too much, not only for his hydrological content, but mainly, maybe, personally mainly, <laughs> for the <coughs> sociological and humanistic breath that uh, you all so well <coughs> represent. Nicola, to you. I would like, uh, first of all, to thank you for uh, the invitation to present uh, our UNESCO Chair on Prevention and Sustainable Management of Geohydrological Hazard. We will have uh, the inaugur in inaugural meeting of the Chair on thurs Thursday this week, so uh, we... It's, we, we present a new born uh, chair, and uh, uh, our chair has uh, four main uh, objectives to promote the development of uh, innovative technologies for prevention and mitigation of geohydrological hazards, then develop tools and procedures for supporting risk reduction policies and emergency management for the safety of human life, Third, to promote protection of cultural heritage treated by geohydrological hazards with a particular, uh, particular reference to the UNESCO World Heritage List in uh, less developed countries. Fourth, to promote research at international level by offering scientific facilities to postgraduate students and visiting research to, to um, help young researcher to, to exchange to exchange of young researcher the, uh, this is our organization the chair is established at the university of florence there are two departments involved air science and civil and environmental engineering and within uh, these two departments two research group geohazard group and hydrological hazard groups the chair holder is uh, Professor Paolo Canuti. Then there are uh, six full professors as uh, chair associates, five associate professors, one adjunct professor, two assistant professors, three new positions are uh, scheduled for uh, new assistant professor, 12 technicians, um, laboratory technicians and field technicians, and 50 research assistants. In total, 80 researcher are uh, um, involved in the Florence UNESCO chair. This is our team, the chair holder, the full professor, adjunct professor, associate professor, and assistant professor. We uh, put into this UNESCO chair all our laboratories and techniques. We have a, a ultralight aircraft, hyperspectral hyper field spec instrumentation, a new patented, patented drone multicopter, a new patented anti-pollution device, a new patented robotized underwater vehicle for exploration on air, underwater, on the field, 
and uh, for uh, various applications, radar interferometer that is one of our speciality for monitoring landslides and slope movements, but also subsidence, oil field, and uh, many, many other um, geological problems, hyperspectral sensors, seismometers, uh, GPS, accelerometer, and uh, robotized total station for uh, topographic survey. The chair is uh, um, constituted in partnership with uh, uh, some international non-governmental non organization, other UNESCO chairs and networks, national government organization, and uh, private uh, donors. Amongst the partners, there is the International Consortium of Landslide, the International Consortium on Geo-Disaster Reduction, the UNESCO Chair in Water Resource Management and Culture here in the Foreign University of Perugia, the uh, UNESCO cha Chair on wo Water-Related Disaster Risk Management in Kyoto University, the um, two organization of the presidents of the Council of Ministers of uh, Italian government, the Protezione Civile Department, Civil Protection Department, and it Italia Secura, that is a new organization for uh, the prevention of geohydrological hydro risk and hazard, and ISPRA, that is the Environment Agency of the Italian government. Our main uh, task is uh, to uh, study, to do research, and to prevent uh, geological threats facing cultural heritage, both for natural causes and human causes. There are immediate drastic effects that uh, require rapid onset and emergency response, but also slow and cumulative effects that requires accurate studies to prevent their uh, consequence. During the last 15 years, the team, our team, with Paolo Canuti, myself, uh, Claudio Margottini, and others, uh, um, participate to several UNESCO-leaded international missions on uh, cultural heritage sites with geological problems, affected by geological problems, uh, foundation problems, environmental issues, landslides, uh, underground stability, floods, uh, uh, geostructural problems, seismicity, and so on. Uh, the, I, I will show you some examples later. Our approach to the problem is in four phases. First, investigation of the problem, fast investigation uh, of the problem using new technologies, then diagnosis, third, monitoring, and fourth, risk reduction actions. Investigation involves the investigation of the origin of the size, the ty typology of cultural heritage, construction techniques, restoration history, evolution in times, and threats. The diagnosis involved site condition studies, materials and properties, hazard assessment, assessment of vulnerability and risk, weathering and deterioration. Monitor, monitor involve the assessment of ground movements, seismicity, weather and climate, groundwater, and uh, time, uh, the, the study of time series and trends. Risk mitigation can be pursued with uh, structural or non-structural actions. Be, uh, amongst non-structural policies for risk governance, risk management plan, resilience improvement, early warning system. Structural uh, um, um, interventions involve risk mitigation uh, engineering wars and uh, accountability of the, them. I will show some uh, examples of our activity for uh, supporting UNESCO in uh, um, assessing risk and hazard for cultural heritage sites. Our first important international mission was in Peru for Machu Picchu sites. In, uh, in, at the beginning of the year 2000, a um, group of Japanese scientists uh, um, said that the, the, the citadel, the Inca citadel, was uh, affected by a giant landslide. And uh, this, ha this uh, fact had a big uh, impact on media and also an important reduction of tourism, or tourism on the side. 
consider that Machu Picchu has 2,000 visitors per day, and uh, it's a big problem for Peru. It's a, uh, a site that is very important for the whole economy of uh, Peru. So UNESCO promoted the constitution of an international group of experts involving several countries, Japan, Canada, Italy, and the Czech Republic, and others, uh, to study and to monitor the site. This was the first hypothesis of the Japanese scientists before the international group. Three rock slide, according to their interpretation, affecting part of the sites and the carretera here in Bingham, that is the road for assessing the site. With the international group, we perform integrated investigation using uh, new technologies, radar satellites, radar, ground-based radar, uh, laser scanning, uh, wireless sensor network, and after 16 years of study and monitoring, we can say that the situation is less uh, serious than uh, hypothesized by the Japanese uh, Scientist. According to our interpretation, Machu Picchu is affected by several landslides, but they are shallow, very shallow, not deep-seated landslides. So problems that can be tackled with engineering actions at reasonable cost. Another uh, site in which we operated is Petra in Jordan. There is a, a canyon called Sik for uh, reaching the site. And this canyon is quite dangerous because there is the fall of small blocks volumes, medium block volumes up to 550 me cubic meters and also large block volumes, sometimes more than 15 cubic meters. We did uh, a laser scanner uh, survey of the whole uh, SIC, not only to have uh, digital elevation model of the site, but for uh, performing a fully automatic uh, stability analysis, starting for uh, automatic uh, field survey of uh, rock discontinu uh, discontinuities, uh, detection of discontinuities, uh, detection, uh, ex extraction of the rock uh, mechanics properties of discontinuities, uh, because discontinuities are the weakness zones of the rock mass, uh, kinematic analysis, and identification of potential unstable blocks. This uh, chain is uh, carried out using software developed by our research group. This is, uh, is the example of discontinuity analysis in the SIC. The blue areas are uh, critical discontinuities detected. We assess the rockfall hazard, yellow areas, which correspond to overhanging blocks, and rock slide hazard, in which there are discontinuities dipping into the slope with a high probability of detachment and fall. On the 28th of May, 2015, a rock slide actually occurred in the SIC, and eight Italian tourists were nearby, but luckily they weren't affected. So. They were very frightened about this, but not affected, no injured uh, at all. And uh, after this uh, rockfall, we checked our prediction. This is the detached block. It's, uh, it was classified between the high-risk zones. And uh, this is the hazard map we produce for the local UNESCO authority and local uh, Jordan government authorities. The red line, the, the red symbols means uh, rock fall danger, the yellow sli rock slide danger, the orange rock toppling uh, um, problems, and the sides, uh, the, the sides of the symbol means the sides of the block. It's, it's a, a measure of the um, landslide magnitude. We did a uh, complete monitoring of the site with uh, reflectorless total uh, station. And this is an example of distribution of displacement vector in the seek and in, uh, <coughs> and in the, the rock face. We, put, uh, we install a wireless sensor networks uh, 
using a very small sensor connected completely without cables in order to reduce the uh, environmental and also aesthetic impact. And this uh, monitor network is still operating in uh, Petra. Last site I, I want to show you. This was a movie, but it, it, it doesn't work. Is uh, um, is uh, Bamiyan in Afghanistan, the site in which the Buddha uh, were exploded by Taliban's, and uh, our group was involved by a UNESCO mission sponsored by the Japanese government in order to stabilize the two uh, giant Buddha niches. The problem there is the rock, because the rock in contact with, with the water becomes sands. So it is highly degradable and uh, um, subject to weathering uh, problems. We did uh, a rock mask at characterization and petrographic characterization, and uh, we suggest action for uh, stabilization, installing uh, rock nails that are uh, very small uh, rock anchors with very small, with very low environmental impact. And we support the cliff stabilization wars which were carried out by the Italian and Japanese enterprise for the final stabilization of the sites. I go toward the conclusion. Our conclusion is that it's important four things the awareness of the problem. There is little, little awareness on geohazard and disaster risk and conse consequently very little preparedness in, uh, for cultural heritage, little understanding of the consequence on uh, cultural heritage and, consequence, uh, and consequently very little resilience. Then uh, policies. There is scarce, scarce attention at cultural heritage within uh, uh, national disaster risk management policies uh, and programs that are focused on civil protection, on peoples, but not on cultural heritage. And these uh, happen uh, both at international and national level. Third is tradition and sustainability. It's important to use uh, traditional knowledge and sustainable practices uh, for uh, uh, stabilization, uh, for risk reduction for protecting sites from the effects of geohazard in the past. And uh, these techniques have been uh, abandoned, but it's important to um, know them and to reuse them. Finally, capacity building. Uh, we, our aim is uh, to improve the expertise in geohazard, in geohazard, and it should be incorporated in cultural heritage management plans in order to identify risk and define appropriate strategies to reduce them. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor Casali. As I don't see... Uh, the second presenter, Mitya Brilli. Maybe we can... Okay, so um, maybe we, before going to the next session, if there are any questions for uh, this new chair, which as you can see relates water hazards with uh, geohazards, but also uh, cultural heritage. Any question for, okay. Everything is clear. Well, thank you very much. Yes, of course. I saw the initiative on the Machu Picchu uh, project, which is, I think, very, very important. But I was wondering if you are as well connected with the persons from IHP working on floods and droughts and because it's not exact this is more landslides but uh, uh, Anil Mishra was launching a similar initiative I not, don't know if you are connected with them not yet because it will be important to be connected yeah but uh, they were precisely looking to have a team like this and you already have it set it up so it will be only 
important to uh, to have it uh, world connected. It, this group is very very clo working closely to the Peru government. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Thank you so much. We we'll go through the next. Uh, thank you. Se mi lasci il programma, però. È il tuo questo. So we will uh, wait for uh, Miti Abrilli when he will come, and we will accommodate him in some of the other sessions. Now we go to um, addressing water scarcity and quality. I would like to call as a presenter Mohamed Shatanawi from the University of Jordan, and uh, he will present the chair on Wadi Hydrology. Which is here. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to be here to address a very important issue, which is about water scarcity. First of all, I would like to thank IHP for inviting, uh, and Professor Obertini for inviting me to participate in this very important event. And as you can see, this is the first UNESCO chair meeting. We've been established for almost more than uh, 15 years. And this is the first time. And thank you, UNESCO, for this initiative. Actually, this one should be have done a long time ago. And I want to thank you. Uh, you know, The strategy of the chair coincides with the unit, uh, unit one network as a think tank group. And it's a bridge builder between academic world, civil society, local community, research, and policy field. So the UNESCO chair in Wadi Hydrology is aligned with the uh, a new UNESCO chairs and unit one network in working in their priorities and their medium term strategy, okay, and strengthening north south, uh, south south, and north south south cooperation, creating pool of excellence and innovation at the regional and sub regional level and reinforcing the dynamism of network and partnership. The activity of the UNESCO chair in Wadi Hydrology actually are, in, in, uh, are with the alignment of the, the eight program of IHP 2014 and 2011, and these are the priorities uh, which are water-related dis disaster and hydrological change, groundwater in a changing environment, addressing water scarcity and quality, water and human 
settlement of the future ecohydrology engineering harmony for a sustainable world and water education key for water security. In addition, we have two crossing, uh, cross cutting issue or themes, which are water and gender and water and culture. <coughs> now, the chair was established in 1999, uh, it is almost 18 years by realizing the role of the University of Jordan for innovative research in the field of higher education and research in water resources management in arid region. We were mainly in arid region. So the UNESCO at that time decided to establish this chair in water hydrology, which is originally was supported by Illus Publishing Company. This is a publishing company supported the chair for the first few years. The objective of the chair are establish a knowledge base, disseminate knowledge, enrich curricula, enhance regional and international dialogue in the area of Wadi Hydrology. Wadi Hydrology is just like hydrology in arid areas. The, the word Wadi is a, a, a dry creek. It's called Wadi in Arabic, and I've been used now by UNESCO and an integrated water resources management. Now, what we have, we have myself as a chairholder, we have administrative and technical assistant, plus we have some material, computer, printer, GIS facility and software, automatic weather station and field equipment to measure, for example, stream flood and uh, uh, we have also uh, the, 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 the uh, weather station we can measure all kinds of parameters. The funding of the chair are from the University of Jordan, UNESCO Cairo office, UNESCO Amman office, and UNESCO court, and the European Commission. I have so many projects funded by the European, by the European Commission, which actually deals with the water resources management under scarce conditions. To activity, we conduct research, seminars, conference and workshops, missions, and other activities. We usually uh, uh, do every two years an international conference. Every year, we make a training course, international training course, in one of the things. Okay, this year, we celebrated the World Water Day and I launched the World Water Development Report. It was actually two days after the World Water uh, Day. And we have, uh, I did, actually, I presented the report, and after that we had a seminar, talk about sustainable water management, food and water nexus, impact of globalization on education, and uh, these are actually by by a well-known professor at the University of Jordan and outside. Now, for the research project, we have several projects. Some of them are completed, and some of them are working on. Water availability and security in Southern Europe and the Mediterranean. I didn't, for, I forgot, not I forgot, there is a new project, we didn't put it, which is Mediterranean, Mediterranean European Research and Innovation Dialogue. It's called MIRID, and this is Horizon 2020. And all these projects are from FP7. Uh, okay, they are actually being funded by the European Commission and uh, implemented under the umbrella of the U uh, UNESCO chair in Wadi Hydro. For example, the one project which is still running is called Wazar Mid, and Wazar Mid stands for Water Availability and Security in Southern Europe and the Mediterranean. And this project analyzes the present and future climate-induced changes 
in the hydrological cycle and extreme event, drought mainly. In Southern Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East, related to threats to the national and human security. The analysis include assessment of changes in stream flow, precipitation, service runoff, groundwater balance, and social and economical factor. Okay. It will study the impact of climate change on agriculture and tourism, as well as the macroeconomic implication, such as income, consumption, investment, trade flow, and industry. The project uses an interdisciplinary approach, okay, integration of a climate change scenario and holistic water system modeling, coupling macroeconomic impl implication and technical indicator, proposing specific adaptation measures for key sectors of economy, mainly in Jordan we talk about agriculture. We have completed several research projects sustainable management of scarce resources in coastal areas, is called SMART, improve management tool, of water, limited irrigation, remit. as you can see that all our projects related to the uh, issue of water scarcity. Deficit irrigation, uh, optimization of sustainable water resources management, deficit irrigation, Mediterranean agriculture, water saving in Mediterranean agriculture, Mediterranean co uh, coordination and dissemination of land conservation management to compact land degradation for sustainable use of natural resources in the Mediterranean coastal zone. You know, as I said, we have education, research, and we conduct conferences and workshops, usually Every two years we have international conference. Every year we have international workshop or training workshop. And we have a lot of national activities. Uh, okay. So now as you can see, we have a lot of missions, which is by me, by cooperators, the cooperators which have been involved in many activities. We have a website, we have developed a website, and the website is under continuous maintenance and updating. It is, uh, we have updated, the, 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 mainly we have a page, different pages for EU projects, event annou announcement, and news and activities report, where a link is made to view annual and progress report gallery which exhibits some photos relevant to the project and link that show relevant links. We have links with the Ministry of Water, links with other, with the UNESCO national, or national Office, we have UNESCO with Cairo Office and UNESCO. And in addition, we work with the Islamic Network for Water Resources, with the Arab Water Council and uh, World Water Council uh, as uh, my capacity as a UNESCO I, I am a uh, chair, I am a member of all these councils. This is the uh, web, and this is our report, and this is the management of the chair. Okay, this is the web, and here, for example, a special page, may, may, which is on, the, on a very streaming gender dimension into water resources development and management in the Mediterranean. Uh, region, and uh, we have description of the project. Okay. The most important thing, actually, we evaluated the impact of the project, and we found that dissemination of knowledge and technology in Jordan, Arab countries, and Mediterranean can uh, be very important participate in human resources management through training and conference. Strengthening the knowledge and experience of Jordan scientists in Jordan in the area integrated with water resources management and climate change. Present Jordan, Jordan European in water resources management, publish 
scientific peer journals, uh, the papers in peer revised journals. And we are thinking now of what is the next step. We have so many activities, actually, that included them. We, I published at least 70 papers since the establishment of the, and all of it is actually related to this project I mentioned. We are thinking of establishing uh, or preparing a project on the effect of climate change on the Azraq Basin area. And this is, it is called, it is one of the groundwater basin in Jordan that faces a threat. Okay, we are working with the Spanish Scientific Research Institute. Prepare a new project entitled Global Change Water Resources and Sustainable De Development in the Mediterranean Glow, glow Water between UNESCO Chair and Wadi Hydrology and Venice University under the call of Marie Corrie. Continuous working with the long on the ongoing EU funded projects, media was our mid, and always we try to update ourselves. Okay? Usually, we organize a national workshop on water training and education in Jordan. Organize a, sem a seminar on food sec security and climate change in the Arab countries. We try to establish a network similar to the network of the Unit Win, but it is, we have about five, six chairs. Sometimes the National Committee of IHP or of UNESCO invite us for certain events, but I'm going to take the lead and have, you know, we have about eight UNESCO chair, only one in water, some of them in, 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 in education, some of them in uh, law, some of them in. So we are going to organize, we have organized 13 international workshop in Wadi Hydrology and there are different themes, okay? As I told you, we are, this is just a gallery. This is this one. This one is the first one on the right. This one is about water and culture. And this was very, very interesting seminar. We have people from Department of Literature, Department of Art, Department of History, and besides the engineering aspect, where all of us integrated in a very successful seminar. This was the seminar about water and culture. This is one of the activities where we involve the stakeholders in the uh, integrated management, water resource management of the Zarka, Amman Zarka River Basin, as you can see. This is also a stakeholder participation activity. And this is a seminar and thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Shatanawi. Uh, I would, I would maybe um, allow for questions and discussion after we finish the session, okay. because there are three presenters, and uh, we should go backwards one step because uh, Professor Brilli is arrived, so we might have Professor Brilli presenting, and, uh, and then we go back to the session. Thank you.
just just a, just a, a small comment. This is a new chair that was ju just um, approved and just established. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are established uh, in uh, the spring this year, but we have some uh, uh, long-term activity. Uh, a, few, a few words about the University of Ljubljana. This is established in 1990. We have a lot of students, faculties, uh, uh, 6,000 teachers. Then uh, we have also so-called um, doctoral environmental protection university uh, study, uh, also related to the risk management. It, 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 the study includes almost 13 uh, faculties, and uh, the major role for the There is the role that the student who start uh, with doctoral degree uh, should choose mentor from one of faculty and co-mentor from other one. That means his thesis should be in between two um, scientific disciplines uh, uh, somehow manage. Which that gives us a very good uh, interdisciplinary communication and study and understanding and so on. Then uh, we have a uh, faculty of civil and geodetic engineering who is responsible for UNESCO chair. We have three chairs on the department, uh, uh, chair for hydraulic engineering who is really responsible for UNESCO chair, then chair for fluid mechanics and environmental engineering. Uh, the main task is uh, to analyze interdisciplinary uh, related uh, questions related to the damage uh, and the hazard uh, which are close connected with the water. Uh, <coughs> the, the, the study is based on the basic principle of water policy which was published almost more than 50 years ago and uh, what we also use and analyze um, there, there are very well known principles, I don't all, uh, like to talk so much, but uh, what we found uh, today uh, is the question related to the third principle of water policy, that water policy must be democratic. And um, uh, a lot of problem which we have in the uh, development, uh, management, and so on, is related to this uh, democratic uh, principle. Because, for example, we very well know that uh, um, water management is very well developed, and almost the best developed in the Netherlands, and uh, we look for the experience of the Netherlands, but nobody looks so much of the how the water management in the Netherlands is organized and established thanks to the uh, so-called uh, water management board uh, which are elected and dependent of the political parties and uh, uh, has historical background up to medieval century and uh, give some kind and uh, release the policy which really developed Netherlands uh, water management in the, in the Netherlands on the level on, on uh, uh, which it is today. Then uh, the question of the nature of the problems. Uh, this very nice paper uh, produced by Witt Clemens and distributed um, for the participants of uh, UNESCO conference on the Hweck uh, waters each year, uh, each two years. Uh, and uh, I, would, uh, I would like to stress a question related to the unknown unknowns, uh, uh, which are something uh, which would we would like to deal. It is the question of the knowledge and how to develop a new knowledge which help us to found the, the solution for real life and predictable uncertainties uh, which is uh, very close related to the 
flood or water, water disaster uh, risk disaster reduction. Then is the question of integrated water-related this risk disaster reduction. Here is one of the lists of this uh, uh, relationship, uh, which are very complex, and the uh, list uh, should be extended uh, almost on the few pages. There is a question what we like to integrate and put together. Uh, more or less put everything together is almost impossible, but our task is to uh, put together case by case the most important uh, um, relationship in the different uh, situation. Uh, <clears throat> because if we would like to integrate the hazard, we should start from precipitation and uh, weather condition and then we have landslide and debris flow and flash floods and the floods, but all together is integrated process and should be treated and analyzed and uh, we should find solution as, as such. Uh, then the question is, what we have today is something what is what we done in the past. And here is one example of the town in Slovenia, uh, which there are maps uh, from 18, 19, and uh, 20th century. Uh, what is here interesting, you can see the old part of the town, which is also here during the flood out of the water. And what is interesting is this part of the town is really a former <coughs> Roman fortress established more than about 2,000 years ago, and this is only piece of land which is out of the water, thanks to the knowledge and engineering of Roman legionaries at that time. And the same, if you look here, um, our railway um, constructed in the middle of 19th century is completely out of the water. It was never happened in the past 100 years that uh, we have any, any any situation that railway was flooded. It is completely out. And the question is uh, why we do our urban development and development today in the such way that we have a lot of troubles. Here is one of the examples um, on the small creek that was one of the first creek on which we make remediation almost 30 years ago. And the resu result of this remediation is the discharge, full, fill, uh, full stream discharge drop from 20 cubic meters per second down to the five cubic uh, uh, meters per second. And we have a lot of trouble related to the, also to the other streams and uh, uh, what we blame for the situation uh, is the climate change, uh, not our policy. And that is uh, some of the questions which also I would like to stress that we make a lot of, um, it will be said, stupid things uh, with our anthropogenic impact, uh, but we don't like uh, to analyze and improve and change our practice. That is something uh, very, very difficult. Then, uh, uh, this, from this reason, we start with the action and promote the action, more room for water. Uh, we are maybe very, fam very uh, uh, quite good familiar with the Netherlands action, more room for the river. We would like to extend not only for the river, for the creeks, for the um, landslide purposes, for the alpine region, uh, for the groundwater recha recharge, for wet land, uh, landslides, for water remediation, and whatever. Because if we are going into the development as usual, then we are in, in great trouble because during the floods, uh, simply river take the space which water take the space which they need. Nothing, nothing special. 
And uh, the question is if are, we are ready to release a part of space back to the water and uh, avoid a uh, lot of troubles which we have today. Then uh, we are involved in the flood risk master uh, study, Erasmus Mundus, together with uh, IH from Delft, uh, Technical University from Dresden, and Technical uh, University from Barcelona. Then uh, we were also on the flood risk uh, conference, which was recently in Lyon, France. Then uh, we have a lot of activity. We have some experimental basin with a lot of uh, observation and research. Uh, we have a lot of field uh, equipment. One of them is ADV Suntec uh, equipment, which we equipped uh, with movable bed uh, with remote uh, control. Then we have a lot of disdrometers, uh, then some interdisciplinary research. One of them is related to the victims, because if we would like to find solution without victims, we should know why people lost the life. And is the reason they lost the life today the same as it was before? And uh, what we found uh, is that um, we, we complete the ba uh, database for Slovenia and uh, only similar database, which, okay, much more data is developed in the United States. Uh, in the analysis, we found that today 60 percentage of the, of the victims lost the life in vehicles, just driving on the flooded road. And uh, in the special analysis uh, related to when it is happened, we found, for example, that is cultural difference that mainly people lost in life in the United States during the evening time and in Slovenia in the early morning time. Uh, it also gives some uh, uh, thing how to how to found uh, the, 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 uh, the the better solution. Then we develop some. Uh, uh, we have research on copula function in hydrology, hydrological modeling. Uh, then make uh, flood research on Sava River basin, included climate change and suggestion for further flood defense and flood protection. Then, uh, finally, I would uh, welcome you next year because in Ljubljana uh, we organized the third World Landslide Forum. And uh, as a part of and uh, connected with the forum, we will organize also summer doctoral school for disaster risk reduction. And uh, we are welcome you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Brilli. And if, if with, with presentation of uh, Professor Brilli, we have ended up the first uh, subsession on water-related disaster hydrological changes. If you have any questions, so we can continue with the other subsession. <laughs> Team one, Ani. Well, I have. Uh, some questions to the presenters, but, uh, but also to in general. Uh, you need to know that uh, UNESCO has uh, several uh, agreements with the publication companies, because uh, uh, I've heard that uh, 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 one of the presentations was mentioned in the preparation of uh, the book in Jordan. So if you want uh, to, to UNESCO to help you to have uh, these publications in uh, with different com uh, companies, CR, CR Press and, well, several companies, just let us know. Uh, you will need to prepare a proposal and we can advance uh, to it. Just remember as well that UNESCO has an open access policy and we have also signed that agreements with these companies to have uh, a open, uh, a open access to your publications, which is good because then you are more, more, more known. The second is to inform you that since yesterday I have 30 new followers. Thank you to all the things that I, I have been tweeting about you. And uh, many of your, what you, things you have said have been retweeted. 
by others and taking uh, taking the message by other people, something that uh, Adrian said. This initiative on uh, more room for water has also been retweeted, and I think Mitya, you, you, I didn't hear it, but maybe uh, maybe you say it, but I was retweeting. This is one initiative that you want to be approved by the IHP Council. So this also uh, uh, now the opportunity to get more support from other member states for your initiative. Um, well, Anes, please, when presenting, a smile for the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Blanca. Any other comments, questions? We had two presentations, two new chairs. Brand new, 2016, one in Firenze, one in uh, Ljubljana. No? Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, this uh, this initi initiative uh, we try to, and we will do on the next uh, council meeting. Uh, I would like to ask for your support because, you see, uh, it's easy to set more room, okay, but it's costly because the space is in the, that's private property. In, in the uh, development in this direction, uh, like uh, from the 18th to the 19th century, when we narrow our rivers and release the flooded area for the agriculture pur purposes, what for this, um, uh, development, every, everybody will be happy because the farmers receive the free land. Uh, government uh, has a new taxpayers uh, and so on and so on. But uh, today, <coughs> to take this um, the land back, it's, 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 it's take a lot of, a lot of uh, effort, political willing and uh, understanding that there is no other way because if we go in the uh, way, in, in, in this way we are more and more in trouble. And this is something which is going on uh, world, uh, European uh, wide. There is a lot of river of, the, of the Italy in which the banks are changed to the bush. And nobody uh, talk about the consequences of such kind of development, which is a, a environmental friendly and nice, but uh, a river which was uh, constructed before uh, for um, provide some amount, uh, some amount of the water couldn't provide it. That's why that's simple, and also. Uh, we need a lot of, uh, I don't talk, uh, didn't talk so much, uh, but we need uh, additional space to recharge the groundwater. And finally also for the remediation, wetlands and whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Can I call now if there are any more questions? Thank, Thank you. you. The next presenter is from the UNESCO Chair on Water, Resource, Water Resources Sustainability, University of San Carlos in Guatemala. Who's presenting? Joara. Okay. Uh, for me, it's a pleasure. It's pleasure. Uh, we talk with you because uh, my my chair is for sustainable water resources in in San Carlos University. Uh, San Carlos University is in in Guatemala. Uh, Guatemala is uh, 
is this is in Central America, uh, near Mexico, and near in, in other countries, uh, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica and Panama, is the Central America. Guatemala is a uh, beautiful country. The, the Lake Atitlan is beautiful. Uh, Ipala Lake is in the Balkan uh, Lake. Uh, other other lakes, uh, the the Mayan people is very very um, re religious for Mayan people. Yeah, the Usumacinta River is a very big river in Guatemala. The compared with Mexico, the um, Polochic River is uh, rain. It's beautiful in Guatemala. Um, excuse me. Um, it's, uh, the title of the, the chair, UNESCO Chair for Sustainable Water Resources in Guatemala, is the financial, uh, financial resources uh, actuality is the uh, San Carlos University. Uh, Starting six May and twentieth century five, um, it co continue continue the the uh, the resources of university. Is uh, the coordinator. Uh, um, I am uh, co-chairman. Is my my colleague Elfe Gorosco is here. The director is uh, Pedro Sarabia. Is uh, the main the main object is uh, contributing the national effort seek the the ensuring conflict and secure the high quality drinking water in Guatemala. Need uh, drinking water a rural area. The uh, only 60 percent uh, have. Uh, 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 drinking water, obeying the different needs of, of country without altering in hydrological, um, biological, and physical and chemical function ecosystems. Yeah, um, the contribution, the, the cultural is training, coordination of national initiative, integration of in information system, workshop to the expert and authority, research topic re related to water resources and nation. Special efforts uh, are made to promote the legal and institutional fra framework re related to water resources, even they don't have low water. In this moment, uh, the, uh, the initiative is in the Congress, but not passed. It's a it's, it's high problem for us. Yeah, the result is uh, this sensibility in the integrated water resources management. Uh, the student postgraduate is participated in different themes in hydrology, groundwater, integrated water resource management, EPANET, uh, climate change, uh, and support the other, other institutions. In hydrology and hydra hydraulic modeling for structure, it supported the IC worm in the uh, with uh, Bill Logan supporter, you is the it is very important for us. The, see, two category two center, yeah. Research project in mapping and Arizona in in national balance is in in the is uh, and final establishes infrastructure. Excuse me, establishes infrastructure in early documentation documentation center the. Receives documentation, information, and bulletin on sustainability of water resources. It's um, the other teams: the environment, hydrology, river hydraulic, uh, river morphology, uh, morphology, and sediment transport works in the river bed in the case study. Uh, the, the the majority professional participate in the integral water resources. Management is important team. Team, Guatemala has 
big problem because Guatemala is vulnerable. The, the all, all the hurricanes and torments pass. Wow, it's this the um, touch of Guatemala. Um, the treatment, the treatment of war is is important. Garbage is in river. Uh, contamination is in river and lakes. Uh, inundation is uh, the the order of water is very 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 difficult. For example, in this photo, in this picture, the pipes very much space. It's uh, 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 drinking water and irrigation or uh, hydropower. Is the the pipe the the water. Uh, the problem is the, the erosion. The bridge is destroyer for event um, hydrological or meteorological events destroy the bridge. Oh, other other consequence the the the, the raining is provoked is this uh, this uh, type of the disaster. Um, the chair, the chair is uh, obtained uh, uh, the result of the other organization. For example, UNESCO is the principal support for for us. The other, 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 uh, other, other institution uh, like um, the uh, University of Buenos Aires, University of De La Plata, uh, and other uh, solar foundation, and the Institute of the Seismology and Volcan and Meteorology and Geology the, in Guatemala is important. It's the partner principal too. The Minister of Environment in association with the, the Sanitary Environment Injury who have been a strategic partner. Uh, achievement. Do the, the pressure of the chair is areas of time you all building. It's important this this uh, this infrastructure for us because it's, uh, uh, now it's more prestige uh, our chair and my my school my school is uh, the Eris Eris is uh, is the for a postgraduate of of uh, master in, in sanitary engineer and water resources yeah the, uh, the the other achievement, the chair of the water has been an example for Latin America and several units of the area are conducting a respective process for, for yours. Um, our, our chair is the number first chair in Latin America. Yeah. The second is the Brazil, is the other is in Argentina, last is the Mexico, the, the Mexico. Yeah. It was uh, created in the Integrated Water Resources Management Master in University of San Carlos de Guatemala. Mm -hmm. um, activities, evangelists, is the training educators in integrated water resources, not only university level, but the decision maker is the principal. Either in the other other level, for example, the rural area, the Mayan people um, in Guatemala. Uh, have a 220 language, the Mayan people. Uh, is uh, how they communicate on uh, integral water resources management. Uh, the, the Mayan people, no Spanish, no in English, no, uh, no read in Spanish. What is the, uh, how is the read? Is the reading in picture? Reading in the uh, uh, hieroglyphics, is in understand for us the the symbol, the occidental symbol is do understand. Is um, forward is most uh, it show the picture important. It's incidents of Congress and central government for inactivity of law and order the water management uh, support for. Governance and water and local national level, uh, diversity and general water, um, 
education resources, academics in I in integrated water resources management and undergraduate graduate in in master degree working. They are really to include in the concept of integrated water resources management, educational material and water is water value, including cultural aspects and gender. The water governance is a thing in which to make decisions and makers. Uh, these are the principal materials in Guatemala. For example, uh, 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 I speak Spanish, no I speak uh, in my own language. Uh, for me, it's difficult uh, is uh, translate the, the knowledge. For example, is in this case, is, is, uh, in this moment, um, is, for example, in the area rural, this place. In, in, this, in this picture, not, not uh, um, need uh, don't, don't need uh, words in Spanish or in others. It's understand the other in all cultures. For example, this uh, person, the the ACCs, all the houses, all people live in the same rooms. Uh, the contamination river, uh, the three um, uh, is good. It's the contamination, the different form, for example, the air plane is contamination, the chemical in different parts of the agriculture. It's all, this, uh, this picture understand all people. Yeah. For idea is improvement, improvement, uh, the, they understand Mayan people too, improvement in water. What is the other, the other picture? The, without words, this. The person clean the house, sanitary, sanitary drinking water, man, the river is uh, without contamination, is understand all people. Uh, no words, it's visual, it's visual. It's important material for us. This picture, those picture, is the successful for for chair. It's communicating all ideas for water. It's principal. Boom. Guatemala happy woman and the marimba is beautiful. Beautiful. What else? Okay. The phrases, the phrases for universities, go and teach for all. It's the principal phrases of my university. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We will have a question session. Later. So the last presenter will be uh, Professor Karamuz from the University of Tehran in Iran and UNESCO Chair on Water Reuse. Okay, good morning, uh, it's great to be here. Uh, I would like to thank Lucio and the uh, people here in Italy for inviting us for IHP to make this possible. I can hesitate to recall my professor at college, Aldo Giorgini, who taught me the art of hydraulic engineering. Uh, he made such an impact on my professional life because he was an artist and he was a hydraulic engineer. Uh, so since then I was looking forward to come here and this is my first formal trip to, to Italy. Uh, we are all in overtime, right? So I try to be as fast as possible. Uh, I'm not the chair, I'm representing the chair. Um, it was established in 2014 uh, and uh, Dr. Saraf Zadeh is the chair. Uh, they have slogans on in the, uh, this UNESCO chair, they try to look at 
agriculture sector, water reuse improves efficiency. Uh, municipal water uh, improve importance of gray water. And they have a slogan for industry, closed circuit of water. Uh, activities uh, pretty much in the last two years concentrated on public and professional awareness. Uh, so we had a number of workshops, we had a conference, and uh, we're looking at the lesson learned through our research and educational activities to basically uh, build a resilience in, in our approach to water reuse. So there were professional workshops of new methods of water and wastewater treatment, uh, and monitoring and remediation of soil and water polluted by soil, by oil, I'm sorry. Uh, we had also people from neighboring countries like Afghanistan, Iraq, attending some of these workshops. Uh, water reuse and environmental protection, water desalination, water and urban green space management. Uh, we had a conference, International Summit of Water in Islamic World. Twelve countries attended, six days intensive workshop in three different cities. It was very interesting for uh, people to come there. Um, and um, uh, then we are planning for another conference in December, December 3rd to, to 5th. Uh, I, I was very happy to hear that Blanca is coming to the conference. and. Um, I have some pamphlets if you need a copy, and if you could manage to come there, that would be great. Uh, the, uh, briefly, these are the conference topics. Uh, looking at capacity building, training of water trainers, and public awareness, community education for water, ecosystem-based water management, and uh, uh, looking at the success stories nationally and internationally. Uh, Conference topics, uh, education for enhanced water diplomacy in our region is really the water diplomacy is a key uh, issue to bring people together. Lifelong learning, uh, customized curriculum for various climate and hydrological conditions, history of water education, and uh, the list goes on, water diplomacy, water safety and health, water economics, and water demand management. Uh, so these are the workshops. We have a series of workshops, a number of international participations from UNESCO family, from different countries. Uh, some of the leading uh, educators of water attending this conference. Uh, uh, the, uh, again, the list is long and it pretty much covers a number of thematic or the, th uh, the themes that uh, IHP 7th is, is promoting uh, from education to hydroecology to uh, basically uh, different disaster or uh, sort of rebuilding our educational curriculum to uh, uh, address a number of issues that IHP 8 is uh, uh, promoting and also is promoted internationally throughout the world. Uh, looking forward, we are trying to build resilience in water education research and practice. So uh, there was enough efforts to make public and uh, uh, professional awareness. I think professional awareness is also as important as public awareness because a number of our professionals, uh, they are not aware of some of the or the way we educate them, there's a gap between theory and practice, which is very, we have, we have been very successful in capacity building in Iran, but there is a gap there. So yesterday I added the Strengthening IHP 8 program. I look at the program and these different components. I think we are covering four teams. Uh, but the key issue is developing a shared vision in Iran and in the region. And I think uh, we could have a, a sort of a leading role in promoting hydro diplomacy. Uh, a number of educated people from outside came back to Iran and they are determined to uh, sort of get back to the international community. So we have to develop that shared vision. Uh, 
I was a part of a task committee in ASCE, and uh, it's important to uh, change or transform that vision into the body of knowledge. So we look at the lesson learned in nationally, internationally. We were very successful in publications. These are my books, uh, published most of them in the last five years. The one on the left is the book I have with Blanca. We published this urban water cycle a few years ago and have a book in hydrology. And so trying to bring that vision or that theories that we are exercising into the international arena. For many years, we use basically textbooks from people from other countries. Now we are generating textbooks. And we have a book in urban water engineering, groundwater. And the last one is Livable Cities of the Future, which is a joint effort with the uh, National Academy uh, ANAE in the U.S. This is again in the memories of an Italian uh, that uh, Professor, uh, you probably could see that there, George Bugliero. George Bugliero was our president at Polytechnic University in, in and he died a few years ago, so this last book, Livable Cities of the Future, is in his memory. Uh, our approach is a systems approach. For many years I taught, and my colleagues, and uh, we have a lot of uh, former graduate students that they are now active in Iran, where we're changing the paradigm from holistic to mechanistic, from mechanistic to holistic, this is, this is a typo. Uh, we're looking at the in national and international development in the field of system thinking, water, and environment. And I was not surprised when, when I was uh, in the U.S. for five years between 2008 and 2013 that we find out through dealing with disaster management in the U.S. we also have um, a lack of systems thinking. And this was uh, basically when we had Hurricane Sandy, Irene, and prior to that Katrina, a very interesting report came from uh, IPET. IPET report came from U.S. Army Corps that they look at these different hurricanes. And uh, the first one they find out was the lack of holistic and system thinking, system based thinking. This was the conclusion of that report. When Irene happened, inadequate understanding of vulnerability. This was basically concluded, and when Sandy happened in New York City, and I was living there at that time, insufficient integration of critical infrastructure. Everything was collapsed because of those interdependencies. So our approach is basically total systems approach, looking at the natural system, built environment, human and institutional systems, and trying to look at the interlinks and outer links so we developed this. I was active in a couple of projects in, in collaboration with NYU, Columbia University, uh, Stony Brook, and other local universities. And we're trying to basically implement those uh, lessons learned in Iran dealing with a different type of disasters. Because in Iran, we have drought. And uh, that's part of IHP 17.1. And, um, we have water scarcity. This is a common thing that we're used to it. But we get drought, and that's a disaster. So we try to look at drought in that the framework of a disaster and system thinking and deal with economic issues, social issues, and the natural issues. We look at the vulnerabilities, again, from natural hazard point of view. We look at the likelihood of damages to our built environment and to human and institutional systems, and we try to prepare for the next drought. Uh, these are the lessons learned nationally. I was involved in a number of projects, and we try to focus on them. We try to look at and revise our way of thinking, dealing with, let's say, drought in Esfahan. This is an unbelievable city, it's a historic city. I all invite all of you to come and see Esfahan. It's a great city. On the upstream where you see that reservoir, uh, the water is crystal clear. When the water passes through the river and passes through Esfahan, 
when it gets here, it's almost solid. The pollution is so high because we have uh, petrochemical companies here, we have steel companies, we have a number of agricultural. So this is a challenge. We have drought there, we have dealing with scarcity, and we have, we're dealing with uh, basically water quality issues. So these are the type of sinkhole, sinkhole you could see around the river because the groundwater is exploited. Uh, we look at the water quality issues in this river. This is the reservoir, fantastic, the highest quality of water. But as I said, when it gets to the, uh, the, the end point of the river, it's almost solid. It's so polluted that the water hardly could, could move. So this is the type of uh, integrated approach. We had a master plan for water pollution. Uh, we basically look at the uh, different sectors. We look at their water consumption, the, their share of contaminations. We develop a real conflict resolution scenario there. We had all the agencies participating. For example, the agricultural sector was claiming that they're only responsible about 24% of the pollution. Finally, after this exercise, they agree and they sign 54% they're responsible. So the project has been defined, the costs were allocated, and we gave them incentive because the government said the higher your pollution is, the more budget you have. So this was a real exercise of uh, talking to each other and resolving their conflicts or their point of view as far as the, the pollutions are concerned. Again, in Tehran, I just want to give you another example. We have major challenges. We have three reservoirs. This again, the capital, like 9, 10 million people are living there. We have local rivers, but we have major water quality challenges because we don't have a sewer system. The sewer system, they're building sewer system, so we have three millions of absorption wells that they get urban uh, wastewater, pretty much. So it's good for groundwater, but there are a lot of pollution. So when you come to this part of the, the area, the water table is very high, it's highly polluted. This part of the area, we have very good soil quality, but no water, because the water comes for the consumption of this great city. And uh, so we proposed a plan to transfer this, basically, water-treated or polluted water to from uh, west from east to west. This is the way we basically propose. This is a diagram of how it works. And we had the local rivers intercepted by this, this channel. We had this uh, anaerobic wastewater pound uh, design here with 55 hectares of land, four meter of depth, two and a half days of retention time. And then we could use this water for irrigation purposes with very high quality soils that we have in this area, but we didn't have water at the, at the current stage. So this is a real engineering challenge and very interesting to change a crisis to some kind of opportunity here. This is a system dynamic model we built for this transfer channel. The same thing, all the local rivers are basically accounted for and this could simulate with this treatment facility we have here. Um, so it's, it's, it's very interesting that a lot of people got sort of uh, educated through some of the challenges we have as far as water quality and quantity is concerned. Finally, we, I'm looking at another case study which is in line with team one and three of IHP eight and we look at the vulnerability maps in another part of the country. This is the map of Iran, and this is basically in the close to Turkey and the Azerbaijan border. Uh, the, uh, we look at the precipitation, temperature, solar radiation, slope, land use, and groundwater. We built vulnerability maps for different, different criteria. We overlay them, uh, and um, finally we got, this is for land use, and uh, we got this, this is for groundwater level. This is the vulnerability map for that, that area to be able to look at how vulnerable it is to basically drought and some other water allocation and other things that we have to 
to consider. We look at the resiliency issues, and uh, we were able to quantify resiliency in different parts of the, that province, especially where uh, basically there's a major reservoir there, Satar Khan Dam. We look at the upstream, downstream, and we built this resiliency framework to be able to see how we can improve the performance and uh, how we could quantify both resiliency and vulnerability. These are some of the criteria we consider. This is resiliency for criteria that is well known in earthquake engineering and flood studies, and we apply the same thing for, for drought, and you could see it basically is criteria and sub-criteria. This was another study which, which was, was amazing. This is the highlight of my professional life. And we find out that the precipitation in Iran and in the Middle East is affected by Atlantic Ocean, NAO, whatever they call it. The index, and this is Azores, this is Greenland, the high, uh, high pressure point. The sea level pressure is very high here, very low here. In a regular uh, year, the water uh, fronts could basically transfer through Europe and come to Middle East. Some of the years, the, when the low and high pressure between Azores and Greenland doesn't work the way they're supposed to work, the water uh, fronts, they go up, and then we have drought in, in Europe, and we have drought in Iran and Middle East, and there are other factors. So these are key food, food steps that they sort of govern the precipitation in Iran and the neighboring as well as, as part of Europe. Uh, we look at this decision support system. We build this decision support system to be able to help the managers to do the operation, demand management, drought management, real-time operation. And this is an example of basically that real-time management on another river, Dez and Karun in the uh, southern part of Iran. Uh, finally, I have a couple more slides. In our journey toward developing working plan, we try to basically uh, reach to a shared vision. We have two main challenges. Design and implementation of a new operating system. This comes to our universities. I call it operating systems because we as a faculty act as operating systems. This is my definition and a lot of people at ASCE and other places, they think that in university environment we are operating system. And uh, we have to update this operating system through faculty development for water education and mentoring and also transformation of a vision into a body of knowledge, developing a shared vision among the players. Uh, in universities, in practice, in executive branch, and also resource generation, adaptation, and impact mitigation in order to place these challenges into resiliency framework. I picked up two of those um, criteria in resiliency. One is robustness, and one is basically resourcefulness. And I listed some of the challenges we have as far as robustness is concerned. Uh, developing unique educational and research strength, continuous integration of technological, social, and educational challenges into the program, uh, continuing improvement course curriculum, mentoring program, student and young faculty mentoring, basically. Regional hydro diplomacy is a major challenge in that part of the world. And when it comes to resourcefulness, we basically rebuilding our educational infrastructure and facilities and organizational structure resource generation and information gathering through knowledge economics. Hiring and retaining world-class faculty, alumni development, fundraising, and lifelong learning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Haramus. We had uh, three excellent presentation in this last subsection, one from from the University of Jordan, and which also explained the, uh, the aim to uh, operate uh, at regional level, and also uh, included um, the, the beginning of the establishment of uh, a, a um, interconnection with the other chairs in the different topics in, in, uh, in Jordan. Then we had um, also a very nice presentation from uh, University of San Carlo in Guatemala, also taking into account uh, 
the importance of, uh, of culture and cultures that are residing in that country that do not forcefully speak the, uh, the, as we can say, the imposed language from the, from the new settlers. And uh, last, we had, uh, we just heard a um, very good presentation from the University of Tehran. And uh, although the chair is called in water use, I'm, I'm seeing that you're expanding a lot in, the, in different IHP themes. But although uh, I think that the major aim of the, of the uh, chair is water quality and then uh, wastewater and water reuse. And um, so I would like to ask the audience if there are any comments and, and questions because then we end the subsection for the coffee break. We are half an hour late, but we, we recover time from the, the lunch. We have enough time. No, we'll go later on. Instead to go at 1, we'll go at 1.30. We have been deciding the logistic with the organizing committee. Question. Question to you, to all the chairs in general because I've seen that uh, not necessarily you are doing what uh, the title of your chair is saying, which for us uh, uh, means that we need to better track what you are doing because we need to report uh, what you are doing. But do you think this is an issue, or and you should change the name of your chairs, or it, for you is an issue or not? For for us, no, no. We are fine. You, you, you want to be, to be flexible. That's the, okay. So maybe in, for the future we need to, to think to more general names because then, because with the names we classify what we are doing and we are finding that we are doing much more than we were expected, which is good. <laughs> um, I said, I just, I treat the title as an umbrella. Um, and so it, 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 it functions like a, a kind of flexible frame where you can articulate it in relationship to the title, but then there are other aspects and nuances when you come to actually practising um, what you're doing. I, don't, I mean, I'd be interested to hear your point yeah. view on that. Can I comment? Uh, see, I, I'm not the chair, and uh, I was critical yesterday that we should sort of try to streamline and... Uh, uh, and in, in Iran and this, in this chair, we are doing what pretty much other chairs are doing. We have, we're have following workshops, we're getting people involved. Uh, the concentration is water reuse, no question about it. Uh, but we're looking at the challenges. For example, when I show you the master plan for Isfahan, our new challenges in that uh, river is water reuse the industry, the agriculture, we don't have water. When we talk about scarcity in that part of the, the, uh, the, the country, the issue is water reuse. We don't have water. And the industries are, you saw those three slogans in the industrial sector. We try to basically recycle water. We try to uh, increase water efficiency. And industrial, which is a major part of the country, we are trying to basically make a closed circuit that they reuse their water and this and not pollute the river number one and secondly they reduce their water demand on water so uh, I, I think after especially after this meeting uh, we should have a I mean the message I will have for the for the people back in uh, in that chair is hey um, these are the lessons we learned from this meeting we have to sort of uh, streamline more toward what our uh, IHP 8 uh, basically uh, teams are. Uh, but looking at those six teams, you see they're all interrelated. I mean, look at the disaster. Look at the groundwater. I mean, we use a lot of groundwater in the, in the country. And when we talk about water reuse, groundwater is a part of it because all our aquifers have been deleted depleted so badly that it takes years and we may not even recover in the future. So there, there are sort of interconnections between this water scarcity and drought. Drought is a disaster and drought is a water scarcity, which we uh, experience it all the time. And then we have this umbrella of water education, 
and that's a major challenge for us. We have so many graduates in our colleges, but the quality is coming down. So we have a passage from quantity to quality in water education, which is, we cannot, I mean, we have so many PhDs, it's like a mass production, but not in water. But we are now, we are now concentrating on to making things sustainable and making them usable and be able to at least utilize the effort of this chair to promote water reuse and the, the things which are attributed to that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. I appreciate very much your presentation. Uh, I want only to stress uh, an aspect of the, of the functions of the water in, in places like in Svahan. Uh, because as, as you also said, the, 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 the river of Svahan is a very, very important cultural uh, uh, identity. Right. Uh, the two, in, let's say, Safavi, the uh, bridges uh, that cross the river. Right. I think um, I think the most impressive uh, urban structures that I have seen in my life. Right. Right. And going to Isfahan and looking that the water, many, many, for many, many, many months in the year, is not anymore there. Right. It's dry. And you know that those bridges are not only monuments. They are places, they are living rooms for the inhabitants. When the water streams under, under those bridges, all the population is there right. uh, in the different levels of the bridge. And they even take with them, you know, tea, tea, tea pots, tea, oven, little ovens to to make uh, little dinner, family dinners under the arches while the, the, the stream refreshes the earth. So uh, I understand, because I, I know uh, Isfahan since the, the year 70s, uh, I understand very much that that water is vital for many other uh, and, uh, vital functions of the human being. But I don't know, how, how is it possible not to take into consideration, deeply into consideration, the cultural, and also the, uh, the, um, the cultural uh, meaning, but also the, the essential function to, to, to give to the, to the inhabitants, right. to the town, not to, to the scholars that go there right. for, 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 for a trip right. like, uh, right. But for the for the population of his farm, they give them uh, the, the the most important and vital collective living room. Right. So this is a problem. Right. It is a problem. I think. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Very interesting observation. One minute. Very interesting observation. I mean, he visited that city, and I think he he touches the minute. the agony and the sorrow that the people have in that city. This is not for tourists coming there. This is for a human settlement that is suffering because the river doesn't function the way it used to function for many years. It's dry. And in the morning when the guy from Isfahan drive a taxi driver, he's not the same guy when he see that the, the river is dry. So it, it, it is a disaster as far as human settlement. I think mean, human settlement is a part of IHP 8. Uh, this is a disaster as far as human settlement is because of for many years of development, we sort of destroy the, uh, the, the livelihood of the river, not saying that we, we are also experiencing that whether it's climate change or climate variability, we are in a long drought and we're hoping that this will recover after a few years. We're getting a little better, but not as much as, and uh, I'm glad you share your feeling because you came from outside and you saw that what type of challenges we have there. 
Thank you. Thank you. If no other questions or comments, I think we can finish here and uh, go for the coffee break. So thanks, thanks very much to the three presenters. And we will start ne next at uh, 12.05. Please be back by that time. Thank you.